Good morning, everyone. Don't worry, the fire is not on yet. <laughs> um, so today it's once again been a rainy day. Uh, it's been rainy the whole week, and this video kind of wanted to show you some of the more practical or impractical things of living in a yurt while it's raining, um, as well as give you some clips of updates of how the pond is doing because it's been a bit up and down, literally. So, uh, welcome to today's video. While I have my coffee, I'm gonna light the fire. Lighting a fire in a yurt when it's raining is actually quite important. Uh, even though it's not super cold outside, we could probably do without. But to ki keep the yurt from going moldy, because it has lots of natural materials like the felt and the canvas is all natural. Canvas probably not 100% natural, but you know what I mean to keep it kind of dry and not go moldy it's very important especially through winter when it's raining to uh, keep lighting a fire and that's yeah and that's also why it's probably not a great idea to have a yurt up through winter uh, if you're not regularly using it so to have it as a guest house every couple of weeks or months uh, just because it really needs to be used all the time to uh, to keep the yurt in good condition. Join me in my celebratory beer. Uh, uh, as you have, might have seen in the first video about the ponds, uh, we started digging the pond here because we had the suspicion that uh, there would be a channel underneath the field uh, uh, because we saw water coming out of the wall on that side and we heard water streaming uh, on that side or a stream of water flowing on that side uh, in the in the wall and um, so I, I moved the chicken coop made the pond a little bit bigger because we hadn't hit it yet uh, and today uh, we finally hit upon a channel of water um, I moved some rocks uh, and uh, they are in the middle of a clay field, <laughs> so to say. Um, so it's the only c a few rocks uh, that are in there. And once I lifted them up, uh, we have a little hole of water here now. And uh, that was just the remaining water, or the water that was remaining in the channel. It flowed in here. And you can see on that end that there is still a little hole left. Um, and you can see water in there, so we have to pluck that side and um, hopefully with the new rain that is forecast for next week or the, the coming week, uh, it will fill up. So I have to now uh, get to it and finish all the, all the scraping on that end and um, uh, pluck uh, or make the, the dam, uh, close the dam on, uh, behind me. Uh, that's my exit and uh, then hopefully it's a matter of waiting until we have a full pond hopefully uh, by the end of next week <laughs> so it's been the second day that it has been raining since martin finished the pond he's now just looking at it the whole time if it's filling up uh, so let's have a look and see how it's going <laughs> Very wet and oh. it's 
filling up quite nice. So Martin drove down the whole uh, edge dam that he made with the digger and it's just slowly kind of settling in. Albeit a little bit swampy. Exciting. How's it going? Oh, the, the water is rising. Yeah. I put a couple of hours ago, I put a stick on the edge and uh, it's a small stick. I just put it in a new one. And that's already a meter deep, I think, more or less. Because uh, that's the deepest part. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well. Can you see, still see it filling up from yeah, I just put in the channel? Clay, like, I just drizzled it over and you can see it, it blooms. So it means there is some sort of water flow. And, uh, so there's still water coming in. In the bowl. And there's no water getting out anymore. We had somewhere during last night and this morning uh, a leak started because there is a channel up there. So it wasn't completely closed. So it stopped filling up further. And uh, I put some boulders on there and, and clay and stuff and uh, uh, stamped it down or compacted it down. And now it stops exiting there. But we'll keep an eye on it until it is high enough so that the water pressure is just further sealing it up. And, uh, yeah. And opening it up. Nice. But this morning we still had an island here or a peninsula and that's now completely underwater. Yeah. So it's definitely going filling up nice. and it's not just terrain, it's coming from the channel. Yeah. Then we still have a little bit, wait, a little bit to go. If you want, you can see it here, the blooming. It filled. It didn't make itself in the Mark. So it's noon already, which is lunch t making time for me. But that also means that I have to go outside because right now we only have an outdoor kitchen. So you might be thinking, why not just have a kitchen in the yurt? Let me tell you why. So our yurt is only 6.75 meters uh, in diameter. So it's not massive like some of the other yurts that you can see here on YouTube. Um, and next to that we're in Portugal which means that summer is very long and very hot and cooking inside um, over summer is very much not doable because the ceilings are kind of lower on the end and uh, it just gets very very hot very quickly so um, cooking inside in summer is not an option which is why we have the outdoor kitchen and then winter is only very short so we decided to not take up space uh, in the yard for cooking um, because well we're also an, a growing family so we need all the space that we can get inside and so uh, for now the yard is our living space where we have the table and the bed and the couch and stuff uh, so we can be comfortable here and while it's raining we eat inside but we just don't have the kitchen inside it's kind of a hassle when it's raining but for us it's not really a big deal um, this winter though has been quite extra heavy on the rain so it's been a little bit annoying but it's not something that I can't get over and I think a lot of people 
are kind of <laughs> spoiled is maybe a harsh word um but very used to being super comfortable all the time and part of of living like this for us is also accepting that some things in life are just a little bit uncomfortable and part of that right now is that I have to go outside for cooking I love you. <laughs> Welcome back to our hole. <laughs> Welcome back to our hole. Uh, it's starting to fill up with water. This is two days of rain. Um, and uh, it could have been much fuller, but we noticed that there is still some water coming out of the, the wall over there. So we first had one sheet of plastic but I think it started to, to float a bit. So now we have a second piece of plastic and we weighed it down along the edge with uh, rocks and hopefully that will keep it down and uh, therefore a waterproof-ish. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm uh, pantsless, <laughs> trouserless. Uh, well, not trouserless. No, I'm trouserless. Pantsless, yeah. Not pantsless, yes. I'm trouserless because uh, I don't have waders and uh, my uh, uh, my boots are not long enough, uh, or wellies, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's quite deep here already. I don't think I can even stand on that side because that's even deeper than it is here. Uh, but this is already, what would it be? Close to a meter, 80 centimeters or so. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, we keep you updated when it's completely full, but this is already a good sign that it's filling up uh, outside of the rain showers. It's, it's the whole valley is what comes through this channel and uh, that's uh, what we're catching and that's what's filling it up. So that's why it's so going so fast. <laughs> I was gonna say there's a break in the rain but it just started raining again uh, I just wanted to take you out out outside uh, to kind of show you how the pond is doing today uh, the day that I'm editing and the day before I'm posting this so let's go outside and see how it's doing <laughs>
So as you can see, it's still filling up. Just not as quickly as Martin had hoped. Uh, this is the other side from where we were filming yesterday. So most of the plastic is covered right now and most of that bank is overflown and it's raining quite heavily but we did discover that it's still leaking on the other side on the edge there um, so we'll have to wait and see how it goes once it stops raining if it really drains or if we can do anything about it um, but that's that's how it go how it's going so far. So we'll kind of have to wait and see uh, how it goes with the pond. If we can plug that hole where some water is still kind of seeping through, and then but it we're still in the middle of winter. We'll have plenty of rain uh, for it to fill up before summer, and then over time, just to see. Now what happens, uh, then we'll start adding some plants to the edges and um, maybe some trees as well so that it's shaded a little bit so it's a, it's a year process, uh, it's not just dig a pond and then you're set straight away. So um, yeah, it's all in the plan and then to answer some of the uh, comments from last time as well maybe in time we can add some fish but then it's really important that it doesn't go dry over uh, summer because here some ponds do go dry uh, that doesn't mean it's a bad pond it just means that it gets very hot here um, and there's just lots of evaporation uh, happening uh, that you can't really do much about um, as well as we want to use the water in the garden uh, because just one well is, is just not enough uh, for the skill that we're uh, working towards. Anyhow, that's it for today. Um, I did want to, before I forget again, uh, say thank you so much to all the people who supported our, us through uh, Patreon um, on a monthly basis, but also the people who uh, supported us through Buy Me A Coffee and PayPal. Um, we really appreciate it. I don't really have the time to answer everyone uh, separately, but do know that we really appreciate it and that we read all your messages. For now, I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video.